Look, there was uh, there was a simmer a simmering uh, a simmering war going on between the Bitcoin movement and the crypto movement in DC. And the Bitcoin movement is Satoshi gave us ethical money. Nobody controls it. You have to pay for it by burning energy or by buying it with real cash. And you can't corrupt it. You can't issue more. It's capped at 21 million. Nobody gets to, you know, co-opt it or use it in a usurious fashion to make themselves rich. Okay, that's Bitcoin. Um, the crypto world is, you know, well, we invented Solana to be better than Bitcoin. And we invented such and such FTT to be cleaner than Bitcoin. And don't mind the fact that we gave 80% of it to ourselves, hmm. right? And that, uh, and that we're going to dump the rest on the general public and we're opaque about it. Now, that, that uh, war is going on on Capitol Hill where the crypto lobby is lobbying for light or no regulation. Let us basically issue these tokens and make them commodities and so we don't have any securities laws constraining us. The regulators that understand better, like a guy like the chair of the SEC would say, look, they're all securities. You can't just let them trade as commodities. That's the same as saying anybody can issue their own equity and, and lie, cheat, and steal the general public. And that would threaten the entire $100 trillion securities market. But, you know, Sam, you know, Sam was the number two donor to the Democratic Party. He was the number three donor to the Republican Party. They've admitted to $200 million to $300 million in donations, but they might have donated hundreds of millions more. You're saying that he was donating that much to Republicans? I mean, we're very familiar with the, how much he's donated to the Is Democratic it? Party. He was, I believe, Lobbyist. number two. He's beyond. He needs both sides. I tell you, it's, dia ah. it's diabolical. We know that he was the number two donor to the Democratic Party. And right. until about a month ago, that was the narrative. And then we found out that the chief operating officer that, that worked for him was the number three donor to the Republican Party. And, and that guy gave $25 million to the Republicans in the last few weeks. Michael Saylor, the MicroStrategy Executive Chairman and Major Bitcoin Bull, shared his perspective on the fall of the FTX empire in a recent interview. Saylor said that for years there has been a low-grade, boiling guerrilla war between the Bitcoin community and the larger crypto community over industry practices that he repeatedly called shitcoinery. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, Michael Saylor, the chairman of MicroStrategy, updates on the FTX fiasco, why it was unethical and illegal from the beginning, and why unregistered securities should be shut down by the SEC. So, Sam basically, he scraped billions from unsuspecting investors in Silicon Valley. Who, they should have known better. He took billions from crypto hedge funds and crypto banks like BlockFi and Voyager. They should have known better. Mm -hmm. And then he took probably $10 billion or more from depositors on his exchange. They, they have the best argument. It's like they were staring at terms and conditions that said he's not going to rehypothecate or use their assets. And he just, you know, he lured them with the promise of cheap trading, high leverage. And, uh, you know, if you thought, well, Sam is manipulating the price of FTT and Serum and Solana, and he was, mm -hmm. right? That's illegal and unethical, right? Your pump, it's a pump and dump scheme. We talked about this before. But if you, if you accept the idea that crypto tokens that are issued by some offshore you know, dude are okay, then you're thinking, well, I guess I want to go buy some of that and, and get behind Sam and Alameda because they're going to drive the price up. And I think Solana went from you know, three bucks to, what did it go to 50? You know, it went, it went way up and FTT went to $50 a token or something. So you could have made a lot of money trading those tokens, but you probably would have wanted to go to the FTX exchange because, you know, guess what? Newsflash, it's illegal in the U.S. Wow. In Sailor's perspective, FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried was the poster child of the latter. There is something ethically broken about being able to issue your own unregistered security. Sam and most of the people in the crypto world were always guilty of the sin of shitcoinery. Saylor attributes such behavior to his perceptions of the crypto community's inherent problems, greed, arrogance, and foolishness. Saylor said that the diabolical twist in the FTX story was that SBH generated billions of dollars out of tokens he printed out of thin air, as well as issuing himself billions in loans from customer funds. Uh, the Bitcoin maximalists would say that the problem in crypto is greed, arrogance, and foolishness. 
Okay, anybody that's investing in it is is either greedy, arrogant, or foolish. So there's three constituencies that got taken for billions of dollars here. The VC investors put two billion dollars into an offshore exchange. The exchange, just to be clear, was unethical and illegal from the very beginning. It, it's illegal to do what they did in the U.S. and it's and and it's unethical if you think. I am front-running my customers, issuing a token, manipulating the price of the token, dumping it on them. If right? you did that in stocks, you're going to jail if you, if you yeah, front-run. It's, it's, it's not— It's absolutely illegal. Yeah. Right? FTX was its own regulator, its own market maker, its own exchange, the issuer, right? All, all at the same time, this is, this is such a—and the hedge fund. Too much conflict of interest. So, but the three constituencies are the VC that put the $2 billion into, into FTX, they were supporting basically an offshore, unregulated casino, you know, running in opaque fashion, you know, a counter the interest of its own customers. They didn't ask for a board seat. They didn't do due diligence. They were chasing what they thought was insane gains, right? FTX is showing a company that goes from 50 million in revenue to 500 million in revenue to a billion in revenue, and they thought they just had the next great thing. So, you know, Sam lies that any con, right? It's like, I think I'm getting a, a deal that's too good to be true, and the con man is lying to me. We're all lying to each other. And, and so that's the first $2 billion goes down the drain. There's another $4 billion or something like that in just loans made by, you know, crypto industry. I think Alameda borrowed hundreds of millions and billions of dollars from Genesis, from Three Arrows, from Voyager, from Celsius, from, you know, BlockFi, Etc. So it's like if you start with this fiction that FTNT is FTT is a real thing. If I create, you know, again, like yo-yo token and mm -hmm. I and I manipulate the price up to ten billion dollars by trading two percent of the float. If you think it's a real thing and I act like it's a real thing, then I pledge it as collateral and you give me real stuff for a air thing. And so there's like $4 billion of that, and they went and they lost half of that. That, they, you know, that was part of the reason that Voyager and BlockFi going bankrupt, and the reason that Sam wanted to bail them out is he didn't want to actually have the loans called. This was not Saylor's first comment surrounding the FTX scandal. In the early days of the unraveling, he was one of the first, along with Binance CEO Changpeng Zhao, to urge the community to practice self-custody. The entire crypto community awaits the December 13 hearing, which will investigate the collapse of the exchange. According to the committee leading the hearing, they expect SBF and associated individuals to appear in court to testify on this date. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, you have the Bitcoin community opposite the crypto community, and there, there's been a low grade sort of boiling guerrilla war between the two camps for the past two and a half years. And Sam is kind of like the poster child of the crypto world, mm. right? Sam makes billions of dollars on an unregulated exchange offshore. He makes billions of dollars issuing his own air token. He, he uh, spends hundreds of millions of dollars giving to the crypto lobby and to politicians. And one of their messages is, uh, you know, Bitcoin is bad for the environment. It uses too much electricity, but not to fear. We have a, you know, a staked air token, which does the same thing as Bitcoin and it's environmentally friendly. So, you know, we, we've always seen that going on. And I think that, um, you know, the Bitcoin community would say, you know, there's something ethically broken about being able to issue your own unregistered security, right? They call it committing the sin of shit coinery. Yep. Right. Yep. So, so Sam and most of the people in the crypto world were always guilty of the sin of shit coinery or pumping and promoting unregistered securities, and and that was obvious. I think. Um, you know, that, that was obvious to the chair of the SEC, to most politicians, right? That the, the phrase that pops up over and over again is the vast majority of all crypto tokens are unregistered securities. So do you agree with Michael Saylor's take on Bitcoin versus all other crypto assets? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.